The Best in the Desert VT Construction Tonopah 250 Off-Road Race, presented by Polaris, is an epic race in Tonopah, Nevada. The race is a point-to-point -point race, one 250-mile loop with some of the roughest terrain Nevada has to offer. The night before the race, Sean Fisher and Mike Heller make last-minute preparation to the car as a change to the suspension required them to realign the car and readjust the shock setup. Hopefully the dust isn't too much for us and podium, always, always wanting to get a podium. I think since we've actually kept this car long enough now to prep work and kind of get it dialed in to perfection, we shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Dan Fisher of Lone Star Racing would be piloting the Can-Am X3 number 910 for the ninth round of the Best in the Desert series with co-driver Sean Fisher on navigation of the 250-mile course, calling out the turns, dangers, and communication to the race chase team. The Fox shocks would keep the Lone Star Can-Am planted to give maximum traction in any conditions the Nevada desert could throw at them. The Lone Star 910 car equipped with Arizona tires mounted on Douglas wheels filled with tire balls are the ideal setup for this year's 250 mile race. Within minutes of leaving the line, the crew was unable to communicate with the 910 race car. The crew would have to rely on keying the mic to let the chase team know they could hear them. Chase the 910, Dan, do you have a copy? team was just starting to get into a groove, keeping in the dust of the cars. The 910 would not need to stop at pit one as communications was restored. At mile marker 49, the 910 Lone Star car entered pit one, still in the top five with corrected times. Communications would be limited for the next leg of the race, a 50 mile long section that would take them around Doyle Peak and back to Highway 6. With road construction before pit number two, the chase team was rushing to get to the pit before the car. How is the car going? Car's doing great. We're coming into the pit. Is there anyone behind us? We are not stopping. We are not stopping. At the last second, co-driver Sean Fisher would make the call to not stop due to other UTVs in close proximity of the 19. Somewhere before pit two, the car had to make an unscheduled stop and make a quick repair. Armed with only tie straps, the co-driver Sean Fisher was in and out in a matter of minutes. The skid plate would once again come loose, dragging on the ground, as the co-driver makes a quick once-over and back into the car without making any repairs. Chase to 9-10. We are 100 yards from the end of pit 3. Everything looked good. I shook the axles. They're all still there. Front dip is tight. Front end is tight. No flats. Copy that. Only three miles outside of pit four. A mechanical failure would force them to stop and assess the damages. Hey, nice end to chase. The front end just 
grenade in. Give me a minute. I'll let you know what's up. Uh, the front drive shaft came apart, and uh, we're trying to get it off. No outside help is allowed, so repairing the car on course is the only option. 910 to chase. We are back in the car, and uh, we just strapped the front drive shaft down and put it two-wheel drive. Copy that, Dan. We'll see you at the finish. Dan and Sean were able to disconnect the front drive line and get back into the race. With only two-wheel drive, Dan would have to drive the remaining 50 miles light-footed to ensure a finish and salvage some points. After 5 hours, 14 minutes, and 18 seconds, the Lone Star Racing Team would finish the race despite a front-end mechanical failure that cost them over 20 minutes of time repairing it on the course. Hey, we finished. It was, you know, we had some very high notes throughout the race. It was a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, hey, it's racing. Never know what card you're dealt until you get to the finish line.